breath. Find the position, and this whole time you're just focusing on this position and weight distribution on the foot. If that position and weight distribution shifts on the foot, something shifted above it. If everything is staying stable above it, you'll stay stable on that foot. But it's okay, so if you've ever struggled with your RDL, this is gonna be a great video for you. A lot of people really struggle with the idea of being able to shift their weight posteriorly while also being able to stay stacked and centered on the feet. A lot of people shift back, or they have this like weird squat RDL thing. Um, it's not that weird. But it really is a very uncommon pattern in a lot of other, like I came from a yoga background, we never do this. It took me a long time to figure out how to make this motion happen in my body. And once I did, it's an incredible glute activator that's really gonna change the way you use your butt in everything you do, so it's worth the time. Yeah, and it may cause a significant decrease in load to begin with. I know for me, I just took my single leg RDLs, not just, but when I was doing this, I went all the way back to body weight and built it back up, and it makes such a big difference. Um, the good news is, all you need is a band. We have a red band. I think this is a phenomenal amount of resistance. Uh, but if you don't have access to a red one, really any band will work. Just be cognizant of the resistance and whether or not the resistance is too much that's like throwing you off your positioning. Okay. This is meant to be a gentle reminder. Yeah. So we're going to put this band around Lily's shins. Okay. We're going to put the band elsewhere in other videos, but we're going to do the shins in this one. This is going to be perfect for the person that when they go down likes to squat. You know, the person. A lot of times these people are afraid to bend over or bend their spine, so they just go down. Well, there's nothing wrong with squatting, we just want to have practice being able to do a variety of movements, okay? So if my knees are going forward, I'm going to use the band to provide a tactile cue to help me feel and think about not doing that and keeping my shins back and vertical. Easiest way to do this is you're going to think about how high your shin is. You're going to anchor it to something below knee height. Lily, can you just walk in there? Yes. You're gonna step your way into the band, put it around your shins. I like it when the band is flat and it creases because it just looks nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, widen out a little bit. My feet? Yep. So one thing to think about when we talk about staying centered on your foot, just line the dumbbell up there to begin with. Make it super simple for you to get in position. So from here, Willie is going to get her 360 degree brace. Okay, she's going to hinge down. Now, one thing I want you to think about is, Willie, can you lift this arm in the air? A lot of people think about hinging or shifting here at where the point where the pelvis and sacrum meet the low back. Okay, this is technically still where your glutes start. But when you think about hinging, you want to think right about here where that bony bump is on your hip on the side. That's where your femur is going into your pelvis. That is where you're hinging from. Okay? This not here. This is not where you're yeah. hinging from. This is where you're creating stability. That is where you're hinging from. And the reason is because this these joints in the spine are not made to take the full load of our body and they start to wear down when we do it over and over again like degenerative joint disease whereas the hips are these huge ball and socket joints with a big butt to be able to do that for yep. us well so this, the spine can flex and extend but it's not meant to be a torque or force producer it's meant to flex and extend but the hip is your torque or load producer so allow that to get practice doing that and allow the spine to get practice flexing, extending your mobility <laughs> drills without the loop. Yes. But let's digress, let's get back to it. So this band is me pulling Lily's shins back. Lily's goal here is to allow the band to help her achieve a good position while really focusing on just moving from the hip. Okay. And a good position is vertical shin. That's yeah. what we're going for, when not the moving the shin. When the shin is vertical and your feet are properly positioned flat and evenly on the ground, you will feel this posterior chain um, or the posterior fascial line, which kind of goes right up the back of the thigh or the shin through the back of the thigh into the glute. 
turn on really well and you'll feel that stability all the way from your toes to your hips. And let's talk about the feet a little bit for a second because they do make a big difference here on what you're going to feel. The hips are maybe a little bit wider than hip width, but not much. And they're turned out just a little bit. And that allows you to almost drive or screw the feet into the ground externally, which means they're going this way. And that is going to fire your glutes. And keeping that tension on the ground is how we bias the glutes to be the thing that's primarily firing here. And you'll feel that as soon as you try it. Okay, so to go through the checklist here for Lily, good spine, 360 degree breath. Okay, now hinge down with the nice vertical shins. Okay, from here, Lily's gonna redo her breath. Okay, she's gonna pre-squeeze and create a mind-muscle connection with her hips, hamstrings, groin musculature, all the way down to her feet. When she's ready, she's gonna hinge up. Great. Now, from here we're just going to do the reverse. So Lily's thinking about nice good breath, hinging from right here, and keeping these shins nice and vertical. As you're going down, focus right here. Focus on that weight over your foot, okay? You don't need to pause at the bottom, that's just to help you get the dumbbell off the ground so you don't get hurt. Okay, so breath. Find the position, and this whole time you're just focusing on this position and weight distribution on the foot. If that position and weight distribution shifts on the foot, something shifted above it. If everything is staying stable above it, you'll stay stable on that foot. But it's so much easier to focus on just staying stable on the foot than having to think about my ankle, knee, hip, low back, mid back, upper back, shoulders, elbows, wrist, all of that. Focus on the point in which all those things are gonna create change rather than having to focus on changing each one of those things throughout the whole process. Absolutely. And something I see pretty commonly is people come down and they try to like bring the weight out in front of them. That makes it really hard to keep your spine stable and it starts spreading you out in a way that just doesn't feel good. That actually kind of bothers my back just in demoing that. So it's, we're thinking about almost like we're sliding our hands down our thighs and the weight is going to the place right in between our feet, stay here. but about one inch forward of our ankles. So this place is where the weight stays in line with the entire time. And one thing you'll notice here is Lily's arms are going slightly back, right? They're not just straight down around the front. So Lily is having to really utilize her lats to hold that position. The beauty is the lats are running from here, the front of the shoulder, all the way down to here. So the lats provide a really great top-down support system for the spine as your pelvic floor, respiratory, diaphragm provide more of a bottom up stability for your spine. Will you can come back up if you're ready. With the weight? Anything else to add? No, enjoy, this is an awesome exercise.